we just thank you that you're always with us and we thank you that you're with us tonight lord we just praise you god this is for you we love you in jesus name amen
Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered.
time. And Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. And every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Praise the name of Jesus. It's awesome to be in God's house tonight, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, we've got some praise reports tonight. I'm excited. Uh, Pam Porter, we prayed for her, and she said her cortisol, cortisol level has improved. Amen. It's up. I'm not sure what that is, but I know that if it's not up, it's probably not a good thing. And when we pray, God listens. Uh, Janice Timon's friend, uh, Anna, is out of, the, out of quarantine. Praise the Lord. Pastor Andy got to come home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Christy put a picture of him on Facebook, and I said, who photoshopped that picture? I told Irina tonight, I said, and he looked better than he looked in his life to me that, in that picture. <laughs> but he, he, I just thank God that my friend, my, as he would say, my old friend is back home. And he's doing much better. And he'll be improving. And he'll be back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Shirley Medlock thought she was going to have to go through a week or whatever of rehab. She was doing so good, the people at the rehab hospital said, nope, you don't need it. You're getting around on your own, you're cooking, you're driving, you're doing all that stuff that we was going to try to get you to be able to do, and you can already do it. Amen. So God hears our prayers. He does. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, this is a little bit, a little bit personal, but last night when we was praying on the... Uh, the prayer Zoom, uh, you know, Pastor Angela, she assigns different things for us to pray for, whatever God had put on her heart and what's on the list, etc. And it came my turn, and I was supposed to, I forgot what the first one was now, it don't matter. But then I totally forgot the last one. I was done. I was happy. <laughs> and then I heard then Pastor Angela say, Bill, pray for Barbara. <gasps> so I did. And I did, you know, it was just one of those things. When, once you reach it, never mind. You know, I just forgot. But right after, Colleen messaged me through the Zoom app, and she was thanking me for praying such a sweet prayer for her mama. And her mama heard me say her name two or three times in the prayer, and she was just, oh, he's praying for me. You know, and that just blessed my soul. That just blessed my soul. And you know, when we pray for these needs on this list, God listens the same way Barbara was listening the other night. He said, My children are talking to me, my children are asking for whatever they need. And He's our supplier tonight. Amen. Amen. Man, I didn't plan on getting this carried away up here tonight. But, you know, but we don't have praise reports on here because we didn't ask for them. Okay? God hears us. He loves us. He's the one that sent his son to die on the cross for us. Jesus took the stripes on his back for our healings. The nails pierced his hands and his feet. It's awesome to serve a God like that, you know? It's awesome. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad that he cares. Amen. So we need to go ahead and continue to remember to pray for Colleen's mama, for Barbara Shepherd. Uh, they've, I think they've got it fixed now where she can't get out on her own. So she, she wanders off and she 
winds up falling down and hurt. But thank God she didn't really hurt herself. You know, once you reach a certain age, people shouldn't be falling down because this is not, it's not a good thing. Things can break too easily. But uh, she was here last Sunday morning. She said, uh, Colleen said they pushed their way through and they came. And it was so sweet to see Barbara. I just, I love her a lot. And I'm glad that God is moving in her life. Uh, Janice Timon also, her niece, sent, her niece sent in a request for her dad. The doctors aren't sure what's wrong with him yet, but he's hallucinating, coughing up blood, passed out, whatever it is. God is in control. Amen. Amen. Uh, Shirley's Aunt Perlene uh, recently had COVID. She'd been back home and she went back to the hospital. Uh, she's 80 years old. I think actually she's 83, we heard today. But uh, they've taken her off of life support today. Uh, I don't know. God is in control. God is totally in control. And we need to continue to pray for Wiley Stevens, Tracy Stevens' husband. Uh, the you know the neurologist. They thought once they thought he might have had cancer and said no, he doesn't have cancer. And they don't have any idea what's wrong. They're going to do, need to be doing more tests. So we need to. Uh, Pray for Wiley that he would be healed and that uh, his mind would be straight and that God will take care of him. Uh, Janice also asked that we pray her for her friend Nisi. She's a spirit-filled Christian, Christian and she's asked for prayer for wisdom in certain circumstances in her life. How many times have you asked God for wisdom for certain circumstances in your life? Many times, if you're like me, many times. And he's always there. And we also need to continue to pray for Marie Cooper so that she don't have to make these trips to the emergency room or to the doctors, whatever, because of this stinking asthma stuff that keeps attacking her. That's totally healable by God. Amen? Amen, it is. Uh, Joe Keating's nephew got a pacemaker. I got one, too. It's no big deal for me. I'm thoroughly happy that I did because it gave me a better, uh, what they call it, said you'll have a better lifestyle, but quality of life, that's the words. My, the surgeon said, why are you so happy you're getting a pacemaker? I said, oh, you, anyway. <laughs> Y'all told me I was going to be so much happier, and look at it, I am. Okay, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> As our pastor says, God commands you to love me. <laughs> uh, Karen Sparks, her mother had had a stroke yesterday, I think it was, or the day before. But anyway, she has passed. And But, yeah, but uh, Don uh, said he's going to miss her. It's more like his mother passed to him. But the thing about it is, we know she's at the feet of Jesus right now. She used to, uh, the Sparks used to be a part of our family at the Ark Fellowship. Known them off and on for almost as long as I've known Andy Ritchie, and that's a, a long time. So anyway, uh, let's pray for that family because uh, they've had a lot of things. And, and Don's, uh, Sparks' health is not good. He's had diabetes, type 1 diabetes for 30 some odd years. And everything that can go wrong does go wrong, you know, when the devil's after you. But let's stand tonight. But I know that we serve a Savior and a God that's in charge of all of this. Amen. Father, thank you that you hear our prayers. I thank you for these praise reports, Lord. Father, I know, God, that every time that we pray, Lord, you listen. And, Lord, that when we pray... God, we don't ask just because we want something, Lord. We're asking, God, because we need your help. And we know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You're our healer. You're our savior. And Father, I pray for all of these requests for the people that are sick, Lord God, the people that have uh, issues with their bodies, with their minds. Uh, 
all these things that are wrong, Lord God. God, I know, Lord, that you are in total control. And Father, I just move on all of these families, Lord. There are so many families that are affected by all the things that is wrong in these, that's going on in these prayer requests. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are totally in charge and that you are meeting these needs. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. You may be seated. It's offering time. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you one tonight. Those of you who are giving online, please use our church app or our website and you're giving tonight. Thank you. As you prepare your offering, I want to share a couple of verses of scripture with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So that means you should expect an increase. Are y'all paying attention? <laughs> you should expect increase. You should expect it. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. You ought to be smiling right now. <laughs> and God is, all, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, somebody say always, always. that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. Covenant givers will never be without God's support. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Covenant givers will never be without God's support. Amen. Amen. Y'all believe that tonight? Let's stand to our feet and we'll make our offering confession. Lord, I worship you with my tithe and my offering. I thank you for bringing me out of bondage and the blessings. I believe I am now free from poverty and lack. Everything I put my hands to prospers. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Lord, let the ministering spirits be released. Let them gather in my harvest now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you in your giving tonight. Hallelujah. It's a lot brighter up here. <laughs> Let my eyes adjust a bit. <clears throat> Some of you will recall a few weeks ago I shared the deliverance I was getting about my fi prosperity, about the finances. Well, I received a revelation of, in my understanding of prosperity and why I was not prospering. And uh, <clears throat> a lot has changed since I heard that word. And um, I'm going to pray before I get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your word, Lord. It's so clear, so not uncomplicated. And when we ask, you show us. I thank you, Father, that as I go through this tonight, that understanding everyone's mind would be opened, their understanding would be increased, and that they can relate to it in some capacity in their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. The scripture that the Lord revealed to me was uh, Matthew six thirty three, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, I was, I'm, I was after the Lord. I gave when I was supposed to give. I gave tithes. I gave offerings. I gave freely. I, I shared, you know, uh, in my, just my lifestyle. Uh, num every way that I could see, I, I'm having some feedback. Every way that I could see was, um, uh, I was, that base was covered. And yet, uh, I was coming up just just short in some areas, and uh, I'm I'm frugal. I'm not a spendthrift. I'm I'm not. I I don't do that. And so 
when I asked God about it, he was so gracious to show me. And it was just like a black line went off of a white page. And underneath was Matthew 6, 33. He opened that scripture to me. Well, since that point, I have been going after more understanding of what was going, what, how monies affect us in the body of Christ. The uh, message tonight is called the Spirit of Mammon. And we, we live with the thing. It's all around us. It's, it talks. And uh, it's out of both sides of its mouth. It talks. And it's so subtle and so normal that we don't even realize. But, you know, I'm going after my, de- in pursuit of this, getting my full deliverance, I'm going after the root of my problem. You know, when I go out and pull weeds, I try to get the root, and there's a very good reason. Because if I don't, a lot more things come up. It spreads out under there, under the soil. Well, that's how demonic things work too. If we leave the root, if we don't deal with the root. And uh, <clears throat> the enemies made some headway in the church. We've all gone to teachings about prosperity. Now, I'm all for prosperity. But we want to hear the mind of God on it. And when I heard, seek ye first the kingdom, it took the whole weight of prosperity off of me. It just took it off of me. It put it right on God's shoulders. If I pursue him, he'll add all these things to me. It's on his shoulders. It's not on how, uh, how good I am. It's not on how many works I do. It's on my heart toward his kingdom, seeking to understand his kingdom, to be a part and to function fully in his kingdom. And this is a, uh, this is a diabolical sc- scheme. I, it's an interesting thing. I, I said it was interesting, but the correct word is diabolical. It's a diabolical scheme that the enemy uses on especially the church. Because on one side, poverty says, if I only had, if you only had this amount of money, then your your problems would be over. On the wealthy side, it says, if you just had three or four million to invest, whoa. Whoa. Do you see how it makes you craven after it? How it causes you to lust? Well, that is what we want to go to 1 Timothy 6.10. It says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good, <clears throat> the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. It says in the first few words that it's the root the love of money is the root of all kinds of so that got my interest up because I'm going after a root and I've been pulling weeds out of my garden out of my flower beds because it looked real clean when they put in the mulch but up through that mulch comes these weeds so I know the evidence is that there was a root somewhere Well, when we've got, I had weeds in my garden of prosperity. So I knew that there was something I was not seeing. 
I was in pursuit of covering my base. I was in pursuit of just enough money. I wasn't ravenous after money. I wasn't coming up with schemes how to make money. <clears throat> I just wanted to know how to get the blessing of the Lord. The appropriate blessing that I was due. Now I can tell you that honestly. And I've talked with many of you here about, am I misunderstanding something about prosperity? I need to know. Well, how do you treat a root? The roots of things in spiritual realm. How do we, are we supposed to treat it? We're supposed to go after it. We're supposed to speak to the root of a problem. We're supposed to go after it. Uh, which is better, lobbing off the top of the plant or going after the root? Well, that's what I'm, I'm hoping to do tonight with y'all. This is part of my deliverance, and I believe we've got a problem in the church in that we've heard so much about prosperity and the goodness of God that we forgot to seek the kingdom. We left that behind because, yippee, God's going to make us rich. And I understand the well. Solomon didn't go after the gift. The, he went after the giver. Solomon was wealthy beyond measure. But his heart sought the kingdom. His heart said, give me wisdom to rule the people. Do you see that heart? That heart that that uh, went after a better way. It's a better way. And you see up here in this scripture, uh, back to Timothy, uh, <clears throat> it says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Those are fruitful things. That comes out of the relationship with God. When God sees that, then he, he just, the windows of heaven are opened. We don't have to pursue wealth. We do not have to pursue it. It is ours because we're seeking the kingdom of God. Now he gives to those. We got a root problem. Not a, 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 and a we, instead of a Jesse, uh, the son of the, uh, let's see, the root of Jesse, we got the root of mammon going. And we need to be after the root of Jesse. We need to be after the kingdom of God. Many will say in the church, many, many people, and I, I'm included in this. Many will say, my goodness, that brother is walking with the Lord. Look at the blessings all around him. Look at the blessings. Now, that's true. But we're supposed to be looking at the fruit. Not the money. Not the money. That's not the gauge. We're supposed to be looking at the fruit. Then when someone walks in kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, then we can say, my goodness, look at his relationship with the Lord. Look at the abundance of, of, of good, of the pursuit. We know he's walking in righteousness because of these things. But do you see what the enemy does? He says gain equals godliness. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture in Matthew 6, 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. This is, I'm going to need a new King James Version. <laughs> 6, 6, 6, Matthew 6, 6. But when you go and pray, let's see. I'm in the wrong Somehow, but that's, I'll read the scripture, just take it off. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. See how we're looking at gain? What was the original sin? It was Eve was told she was lacking. So it made her go after glory. She wanted to be knowledge of she wanted that knowledge that God the same, equal with God. See how he got her to lust for something? But she had goodness all around her. 
she had no knowledge of evil. She had no, only good. But this evil, evil serpent told her she was lacking. And she lacked nothing. He will tell us we're lacking. Our relationship with God isn't good enough. It's not going to cause you to gain. We're going to have to. We're going to have to put in the world system somewhere. We're going to have to multiply ourselves. That is not what Paul did. Paul was a. a Paul sought the kingdom of God. Now in Philippians four eleven, let's see if I got the right verse on that. Okay, he said, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now that came from God into him. Because contentment, uh, to be contented is, is showing no desire for something more or different. That's powerful. We just, this, this thing of more, 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 it goes in us. We're can't, we're, we need to be satisfied. Now, Paul could have, could have had a tremendous wealth. I'm going to come to that, back to that later. Matthew 6, 19 through 24. It says, do not... Lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. How do we lay up treasure in heaven? By seeking the kingdom. By being with God. This is a very sober thing to me. Because it's like I, as I began to get healed. It was t- turning over rocks and there were more squirmies there. Have you ever kicked over a rock and looked underneath? That's what was happening. That's what happened to me. And then it says, for where your treasure is. If you store up treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is. There will be your heart also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If you view things correctly, if you see through the eyes of God on things, then your, then your, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad... Your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now we think we can. We can try to balance it out. But this is so clear, I can't mess it up. Now, you notice it's Matthew talking. Matthew was a tax collector. He had seen every phase of money's working. He was probably no telling what kind of thief that man was. But he now was seeking the kingdom. Do you see how he's exposing? Because he's seeking the kingdom, he can see it now. So we want to listen to Matthew about money. I'm not saying we shouldn't say our prayers and, 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 and speak blessing, but we need to go right back to saying, thank you, I know you got it under control. You see me, I seek you with my whole heart. I have no worry about finances. It will come through the windows of heaven will be open to me because I seek you first. I'm not listening to mammon talk to me to worry on either side of this. Do you see what I'm saying? We, it is two-faced. Mammon is two-faced. And it is loud in this world. There's all kinds of schemes. Matthew 16. Verse 24 through 26. 
If anyone desires to come after me, let him, desire, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We've got to have money in its right place or it will destroy us. Please uh, take this seriously. Having money in the right place is very important. This is so clear. And I'm checking me out whether how I feel about charging, how I feel about whatever. I'm really checking it out. Having that credit card, does that cause me to lay down uh, the no? Like, no, do I not say no to myself because I've got a piece of plastic? I've got to examine. I've got to examine myself. When God's people came out of Egypt, they came out with wealth. Now, they had been in, in, God was bringing them out, brought them out, brought them across the sea. They had wealth, but it wasn't long till that thought came to them they were lacking. They were having manna from heaven. It was coming down. They had no need for food, but they lusted after quail. They lusted after garlic. They lusted after what they had given up in this world. And that's what we've got to get balanced. We've got to so seek the kingdom of God that we, this doesn't even matter anymore. That we know the riches of heaven. Are, God can give those to us. He, he is the one that gives all this. The world will tell you it gives all this, but it doesn't. Uh, I know three billionaires. I know them uh, from Bible college, but there was two of them especially. And one of them is a Fortune 500 guy. And his name is Dean Radke. If you get it, Google him if you, if you want to. Dean Radke. This man and his wife, I didn't know, have a clue who they were. They were there to teach. He was teaching business according to the kingdom of God. How he dealt in business in these Fortune 500 companies out of his, out of, out of using the kingdom principles. He was teaching that at school. It was amazing. And he, had, he didn't use overheads or anything. He just used huge, I've never seen whiteboards that big. But he had them all across the stage. And he was kind of tall and lanky, you know. And his arms looked like they were, went on forever. But he could go to the whole height of those big boards. And he was showing us how he gathered men together. And he would not put in his businesses men who would not adhere to the kingdom's rules. Well, God was free to pour money into that man. His wife, I didn't even know who they were. And he and his wife walked up to me, and here I am handing out pamphlets and directing, you know, how you greeters do. And he walked to me, and he said, Let, tell me about you. And I thought, okay, my name is Joy. And he was just, but I knew later after he and his wife got on the stage who they were. They were ordinary people. They thought no higher of themselves. They were not elitists. Money separates us. It's a divider in the body of Christ. It divides us. And we cannot allow this spirit to speak to us and divide us from our brethren. From the least to the greatest. We've got to protect one another. We've got to protect our own minds. We are not going to look at, at someone who's wealthy and say they are God, they're so blessed of God. They have great gain. That's great gain. That's great. That really measures big in the kingdom of God. No. That's not the gauge. That's not the rule. That's not the ruler. It's the, it's the, it's the fruit. And we've got to... Um, uh, the people that came out of Egypt says, the heavenly, the heavenly 
uh, provision. This is what a mind says when it's worldly. The heavenly provision isn't suitable. It's not enough to a lustful mind. You're, heaven? What do you mean you're going to be blessed from heaven? The world systems are are tricky and evil, and we, we've got to get our heads, heads out of them. We need to get our heads straight. I think we, too, don't really like the taste at first of heavenly provisions, much like the Israelites. We want it now, thank you very much, and I want it cooked this way. They didn't like manna, and we do the very same thing. We need to be thankful but we need to acquire a taste for the heavenly. We need to humble ourselves and begin to acquire, require, acquire this taste for the heavenly so that we will know it when we see it in somebody else's life. We need to recognize what we're supposed to recognize in, in others' lives. If they have a weakness, we don't judge it we we edify and build we must begin to acquire the taste of the heavenly leave this old world system in its in its ditch and realize that our abundance our increase comes from the heavenly and it may not be the it may not be what we're expecting it may not be as we are renewed in the spirit of our minds by the word of God, our tastes change. Have you ever noticed that? Have you noticed you think differently? You think differently about things? Have you noticed that in your life? Have you noticed that when you, when you go among your family, you're not quite as welcome as you used to be because you think differently? Your unsaved family, I mean... As we were praying for people tonight, I asked myself, why haven't I talked to the family, y'all? Uh, my son, who hadn't talked to me in 12 years, called me Saturday. He talked an hour. Since then, he's given me my grandson's phone number. And I haven't seen Quentin in 12 years. He was hidden from me. He has muscular dystrophy. Last time I saw him, he was in a wheelchair. He was six. Now he's 18. I'm, I am approaching the, this totally different than the past. I'm approaching it. God said to me at Shelley's small group, as I began to share about my son, the Spirit of the Lord said, like a husband said, you need to get behind me. You know how a husband will bark a little? And I wanted to say, yes, sir. I didn't, and Shelly prayed. We prayed that night. Well, my son called, and all, I saw his name on the phone, and it was in slow motion. I picked it up because I wasn't sure what I would hear. And I just let him talk. I haven't called my grandson yet, but when I do, I'm going to just text and see if, if, if it would be all right with him if I call him. I'm not assuming anything, and I'm staying behind my husband because I want it to go well. I can't tell you the, the change that's happened inside of me by seeking the kingdom of God. It has changed my soul. I'm not walking in fear. I'm walking directed by God Almighty. I'm receiving instruction from that kingdom that will change this kingdom. We've got to get in the ball game and know where to receive our instruction from about finances, about everything about relationships 
about everything. We need to go to the kingdom of God and say, what does your word say about relationships? What does it say about things? In the story of the talents, we all know about the talents, the five, the two, and the one. We all know about that. And we know what they did with them and everything. But this story to me deals with the things that were given the money that God gives us. And in Matthew 24, 14, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. From heaven is where the talents came from. The five talents was about $5,000. I read somewhere. Now, those men had giftings, abilities. We could look at that and say, that's the whole scripture. That's what it's all about. No, it came from heaven. God's idea is to bless. It didn't come from the earth. The idea of blessing comes from God. It, com it's his, it comes from God. What we get needs to come from heaven. We bless ourselves way too much. The talent was God's idea based on, I think, the condition of the soul in those three men, those three people. It was the condition of their soul is how they handled it. But the talents themselves came from the Heavenly Father. The number of talents given to each one wasn't determined by the servant. And we have many people walking around saying, I want to be the one that gives the most to the kingdom of God and God's things in the earth. And it's okay. We can be millionaires. Yes, we can. We can say we want to be the giver of givers and all kinds of things. And, you know, you make your plan. But those men were given certain amounts they could handle. Or not. That all of that reasoning came from God. It didn't come from the men making a decision. Okay, it's time for my talents. Based on what I can do and understand. How big I am in the earth. No. I have quit looking at myself as coming behind in everything. I, if I seek the kingdom of God, I'm ahead in everything. We seekers of the kingdom of God, we leapfrog over any systems that are of this world. Because it's based, on the king, it's based on the Father's heart. The giver of all givers. The blesser. We, said, we, we found a scripture in Sunday school uh, two Sundays ago. It said, fear God and his goodness. We can't take for granted this goodness that God has. We need, to, we need to humble ourselves and go after him with everything we are. And not banking on uh, false, not being false about any of it. When God looks at us, does he see our abilities in the natural or the condition of our soul? That's a question y'all need to ask yourself. What is the condition of my soul? Am I seeking the kingdom of God first? Have I changed? Paul was a man of many natural talents. I mean, he was a scholar, a Pharisee, a lawyer, a speaker, and capable in many areas of life and had access to wealth. In his words in Philippians 3, 7 through 11, now listen to this. This is this man who had a really act together, his act together. If you were looking for talent, you'd go after Paul. If you were looking for, you know, someone that had, it says in his words, he says, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost, loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish 
that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, works, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed, uh, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. My, 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 my. He was looking to heaven for all his blessing. He considered it the highest thing he could ever do. And he wrote the New Testament practically. What would we have done if Paul hadn't been in prison? For he wrote what he wrote. Where would we be? The most valuable thing that we can have in this earth is our soul being renewed. We need to protect it. We need to, we need to be sober about it. We need to gauge our relationships. If someone does something that hurts your soulish area, don't be around them. We have a lot of people that keep their old relationships and it doesn't work well for them. It keeps them wounded and so forth. I pray that you've heard this tonight. I pray that I've been clear. But in my own deliverance, I am, I am seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I want to see a light. I want to see his glory. I want to see him add things to me from heaven that no man could have added to me. I want that so much in my life. And uh, I feel like this week is just the beginning of what's going to happen. I think it's, it's, we are seeing, we're seeing things in the earth right now. We don't have time to dilly-dally in the earth. God's given us a vision, what we're supposed to be doing, and we need to be light. So when we go out there, the enemy runs from our, the, the glory that's on us. We want to walk hand in hand with the Lord. In this, hearing from heaven the instructions we need to do what we've been called to do. If y'all would stand with me, I want to pray and close this out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Matthew and his commitment to you, Lord. I thank you that he reasoned through things and that Paul sought you first I thank you Lord for the words that we were able to share I was able to share tonight and Father I pray for us that we would take soberly how mammon speaks to us and causes us to lust after something from this world but we can look to you Lord and you are the author and the finisher of our faith you're able to add things to us. You say in your word that you will add all these things to us. I thank you. I've eaten today. I've got on clothes. And <laughs> I have a place to sleep. And getting down to the basics, he's, you've added, I am prospering in those things. Prosperity is measured in simplicity. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I praise you, Father. We are prosperous in this place. I pray that you will be able to pour wealth upon us because we seek the heavenlies. We seek the heavenly blessing, not the things of this earth. Help us to lay up our treasure in heaven so that you can just do what you need to do, give us what we need to have. Father, I know that there's going to be millionaires in the body of Christ. There's going to be there, I've met three of the 
men that you've raised up to billionaires. They're humble. They're, they're, self, they're selfless. And I pray, Father, for that to happen to, to many of our people. I pray, Father. But I, I, I thank you, Father, that my life is simple. I thank you that you've given me more than enough. And I appreciate you, Lord. I thank you for your word and, and the revelation, Father. It's such a blessing to my life. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.